up. By the time it's the last roll, Hey everybody, so we're in my backyard, in case you don't know, uh, if you're one of Chris's followers, uh, my name is David Cinelli, and me and my good friend Chris Kukoc decided to, since we weren't able to have all of our family and friends uh, get together for a Father's Day smoke, we thought, you know, social distancing rules, we just have a small group of guys, and bring my good buddy Paulo, which he's the reason why I got started smoking cigars. Uh, all of you got a cigars from both Chris and myself, and we thought, you know, this might be a great opportunity not, even, not only to learn about cigars, but understand why we pick these ones and what happens to cigars. So even if you're a beginner, you'll know like, yeah, you might get a new habit, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know I'm super excited about this because I'm not a smoker at all. I think I've had, you know, four cigars in my life and one of them was here at David's last week. And it was embarrassing. <laughs> and it was embarrassing. <laughs> so I'm super excited to have Paulo here and ask him questions. Actually, you guys can type in questions as well. Uh, anytime, if you have a question for Paulo or for us, just type it into the comments, and we'll be or for Steve, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll get right on it. But Paulo, the first question I wanted to ask you—you you were telling us a little bit about it off camera, but can you tell me why you chose this cigar for us? Okay, so this cigar is called Flor de la Santilla. It's the Toro. It's actually um, the cigar of the year for 2012 in Cigar Aficionado. Uh, got a 96 rating. Um, this cigar is made by my father, and as we're talking Your about father. my father, <laughs> coming up next weekend, um, great product for us to sell. Um, it sells like hotcakes for us. Um, I work for a company called Hustle Horvath. We're the Canadian distributor and manufacturer of certain brands. We actually have a manufacturing uh, plant at Ossington and Queen. We make uh, four different brands um, that are machine made. And then we import a lot of Nicaraguan, Honduran, Dominican, and Philippine tobacco. On top of that, we also are the uh, importer for the Toscano Italian cigar. 
which is uh, actually a really good product that we sell in in, uh, in Canada. So this cigar is um, really really um, really done really well. It comes in Canada in boxes of ten. Um, all your tobacconists uh, have it, and also a lot of your independent smoke shops, or sometimes uh, even a little variety store with a humidor will have this. Um, so you can find it anywhere readily. We we have um, we have uh, reps throughout Canada that sell this, and we we actually had a big promo uh, for Father's Day, and um, they're all stocked up, ready to go. So go to any of your local tobacconist or smoke shop, and you'll find this. Uh, retails uh, anywhere from about $17 to $20. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit of information. Every cigar has a binder, filler and wrapper. Um, this is a Nicaraguan um, cigar. The, the, the actual wrapper is a sun-grown wrapper. Um, Nicaraguan, uh, so is the binder and the filler. Um, I just took the cellophane off. All, all Nicaraguan cigars pretty well have a, a cellophane wrap on it. This actually has a little, a little foot band, a uh, little red band, and that's something that uh, my father always has a distinction of doing. They add a lot, a lot of um, little touches to their cigars. Not everyone has a foot band. Um, a lot of them have a label, and uh, the, the actual name, Flor de las Antillas, in Spanish it means the flower of the Antillas. So the Antilla Islands are the Caribbean Islands. And, and the flower in this case is referring to the island of Cuba because it's the biggest island. And this island is, um, so it's paying tribute to, to Cuba, the biggest island. They're calling it the flower of all the islands in the Antillas. Um, the reason they do that is the, the, my father, the manufacturer, uh, is the Garcia family and they're basically paying tribute to where where it all started so the garcia family was originally from cuba and they basically left cuba and now they're they're in nicaragua and they're basically uh, paying tribute to their original roots where they started uh, and that's where cigars really started uh, back in the days and and we, as uh, I guess the world, didn't really know anything about cigars until Christopher Columbus went on his great journey. And when he went to the island of Cuba, and the native Indians there, they basically traded. And uh, basically the Indians gave Christopher Columbus cigars to bring back to Europe. And that's how cigars kind of became very popular and, and the high-end people could only afford it because it was something r really rare that wasn't available um, in any other part of the world and um, basically throughout the, the, the industry, in the cigar industry, a lot of Dominican uh, cigar manufacturers originated from Cuba and so did Nicaragua. So, and there's also Honduras to mention. So that's kind of where it is in terms of the history a little bit. I don't want to get into much. Someone can ask a question. Um, I'll greatly answer it if I can. Um, I do want to cut the uh, cigar. So there are different ways of cutting it. This is what they call a V cut. It's my preferred um, preference. It cuts a, a, an actual V into the cigar. It keeps the cap intact and it's nice and clean. Um, this is one form. There is another form, it's called the, um, the double-sided cutter, or there is one called the guillotine. The double-sided cutter is two, two blades that basically will cut. And this is actually, um, it's a fail-safe style because you can't push it further than it has to go, so it always makes the perfect cut. So it stops it, so you can't cut more than 80%. Um, so a lot of people use that as well. So that's the style. Um, so I'm gonna do a V cut, and then gentlemen, you, you yeah, can take prefer, your yeah. preference, and yeah. um, and I'll grab one for Derek. Derek just came here. We'll start. Here you go, guys. Oh, I see a lot of equipment on the table. Are you yeah. talk to someone. <laughs> so I like so. So Derek, my good friend Derek just got here too. So Derek, I like doing the V cut. So with these ones, I like going this way. Hey. So V cuts like this. Oh, well, when I, yes. always, I always go this way, right? Yes. Yeah, that's why I like yeah. it. Yeah. So, if you look at the cigar this way, guys, like, see how it's kind of like it's flat? It's pressed. It's pressed. 
So when I take my V cutter, I like putting it, I like cutting it this way. So when I cut into it, you, you want to kind of see how the V cut looks on the longer part because of the pressed one. If it's not pressed, it really doesn't matter. My spring on my V cut is pressed. So what you want to do is make sure you push it all the way and then push through. Derek, you can use that uh, the white bowl as an ashtray. So I want to go this way. Perfect yeah, timing. And just yeah. <laughs> perfect perfect so timing. Nailed. Did you want the water or? Uh, it's, it's, I always have a glass of water afterwards. Yeah, I got some. Uh, I got some flavor of cans behind me. Lovely. Excuse so, me, guys. So the reason um, I, I actually prefer the V cut is if you can. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'll just bring it a little closer. A little more. So the so the V cut it actually cuts into it like a V. So. It, it doesn't look good, but in reality, when you have a cut like that, if I were to open up that cut, it actually gives it a lot more breathing room. So, so that is actually a lot more surface area. This is very good for, especially for Cuban cigars, because Cuban cigars to have a tendency of having a little bit of a dry issue. Um, that's kind of what the markets, everyone's saying in the market. That's a, an issue that people are having. So I, I kind of prefer this. Um, the only thing is, with this cut, it's going to give you a lot of a lot of uh, breathing, so it, it will inhale nicely. So just be aware that if you are a person who smokes pretty fast, you can actually uh, smoke the cigar faster than you usually would. All right, so I'm going to sit down and start it up. <laughs> we have none of those around. Here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Derek, find out. I'm <laughs> Sao Paulo. Oh, Sao Paulo. We've had a few of these this week. <laughs> <laughs> Most important thing about smoking a cigar is preheating the cigar. A lot of people don't do yeah, this right. Oh. Um, there's actually two two forms of lighting. There's a, a torch lighter, very precise. This is a single flame. There's a three flame. There's a two flame. There's a four flame out there. I prefer a single flame because you have direct heat on certain parts of it. Uh, the traditional way is, is the cedar wood match. Now that's good too, but a lot of people these days don't prefer the cedar match I do occasionally if I'm having a nice cigar and I wanna I had a really nice meal and I'm, I'm sharing it with some really close cigar smoking buddies I'd like to pull out a cedar match and do a traditional light um, it's not easy to do because you have, you have a long, long cedar, cedar match, match when you strike, strike it. It. It, it, uh, uh, all, all, all cigars, cigars, when you cut the cigar, you have to make sure you're cutting about 80%. Now, there was a cutter I didn't show, it's a punch cutter. Um, there is one size, and that's usually for a Corona size. Um, but if you're cutting anything bigger like a Robusto or a Churchill, that's not big enough. Um, you have to cut 80% of the cap. And if you're not cutting 80%, then it's causing uh, problems with drawing and then you might find that it doesn't it doesn't it has a little bit of irregular burn on the side So sorry Paula when you say 80% of the cap you're talking about this part that looks yeah, like it's so, sideways So 80% so when you're when you're looking at the cigar this is the 100% you want to cut Not to the edges you want to cut like about uh, a, About a little less so you want to cut oh, About there saying. that's I how much you want to cut I see, see that yeah. you don't want to cut to the edge but you got to cut to about there. You keep the bend. Yes, yeah. in the bend okay. you want to cut. Okay, very important. But this is this is a, a really nice way of doing it. And you know what? When you're laying it that way, you, you take time, and you know what? You enjoy it. Um, it's not easy to do. Some people, you kind of have to do the flame's got to be like this, and it's not like that because of that. But anyways. Not a lot of people do it. I, uh, a lot of people use the torch lighter. So I'm gonna make sure I give it a good, a good preheat. If you don't preheat the cigar and I'm going around in circles, I'm trying to hit the edge. Now, if we were smoking and it was completely dark at night, when I'm doing this, you, you should, when the cigar is ready, when you see an actual glow along the whole entire edging. When I pull it off, you would see a glow in the dark on the edging. That means that you're, you're lighting it properly. The reason you're preheating the cigar is there's moisture in the tobacco leaf. And that moisture has to be dried off in the burning process. Um, very important. 
so I got a nice ash on it now. So now that I got that nice preheat, now I can put it to my mouth and start drying. And that's how you light a cigar. Is there something that would indicate to you that you haven't got it, it's not ready, you haven't tried it out enough? You, you want to see a little bit of a, okay, you can't see the glow in the dark because it's yeah. not dark, but you should see a little bit of an ash along the ring. Yeah. The actual ring, when should you're lighting light? it, yeah. you should see that. And you want an even even burn. Okay. The reason you want an even burn is because the, the leaves inside, there's different leaves. There's Ligero leaves, there's Seco leaves, and those combination of leaves are from from end to end it's it's all one piece so if you light on one side and it's burning on one side then it's not going to taste properly because the taste is is not burning properly so it's very important so you always want to make sure you get a nice even burn throughout the cigar so there's many leaves in one cigar. yes so so there's you you have you have a uh, filler leaves okay. which is usually a combination of um, anywhere from four to five leaves. Um, you have a binder leaf, which which actually is a leaf that's not as smooth as the wrapper leaf. This is the wrapper leaf which okay. you're seeing. It's a very smooth, delicate leaf, very thin. Um, the binder leaf is rougher. It kind of um, kind of like a backwards. It's got a lot of wrinkles to it, right? And then. Uh, and not, not so much the center stem, but the cross supporting stem of a tobacco leaf. So when they're rolling a cigar, the leaf is, is like this. So it's the center stem is removed. And what they do is they try and use the outside part of the leaf to roll the binder, the wrapper leaf, because they don't want they don't want as much of the supporting stem. Supporting stems will cause it to not drop off. Turn a little more, Chris. Turn it. So that's that's important. So you're lighting it. Turn it. It's like a piece of like every single piece of a cigar is a piece of art. It is. Well, it, it's this is all well, it's hand, hand, hand rolled, yeah, right? Hand rolled. Yeah. And these people, these people are basically their livelihood is rolling cigars every day. Um, that's what they do. So they they and you gotta understand every year the quality of the tobacco will vary. It's not, it's not always the same, um, but at the same time, uh, there are, it is a, it is a product that is, has been made for many, many years. Um, and you know what, and it's kind of interesting. A tobacco seed is so small that, you know I mean, from one plant, you would be surprised how many, how many seeds they actually get from one plant. It's, uh, it'd be something that you, you would look at and say, it's, it's, it's unreal. And, and they're so small that they actually have to, separate them in a, in a greenhouse before they actually plant them in in the field so <laughs> so how, how is the first uh, first good, good. Uh, first, first senses so michael good. the uh, some some people are asking for the link they're not getting the link correctly You'll you'll also have some earthy notes to it. You'll you have some sweet cedar. You'll taste. Some people might taste a little bit of a cocoa taste to it. But this cigar, at the end of it, when you're done, it's not going to be a cigar that's like, oh, you know what? It's like, oh man, that cigar, it was good, but it was, it killed me. You know, this is a product that everyone can smoke and it won't be overpowering um, in some cases some people could smoke this in the afternoon um, it wouldn't be for your for first time starter it wouldn't be a cigar you have after a nice breakfast because it's <laughs> got some power to it right so i would recommend more of a dominican uh, cigar for that matter um, but you know what it is it is a great cigar and and the reason it did so well um, because of not only the price point um, nice the yeah. fact that it's a medium strength, it, it kind of reaches the whole the whole market. Yeah. It's not just you know the, the the Cubans like the heavy hitters in in the strength in the sense of that. So you know enjoy it a little more. If if you have any questions, I can answer. If there's any questions online, I can answer as well. As so Chris, sorry, as a novice smoker, like so oh, when you're puffing fantastic. on it. So it's very important. Like, look, look, watch how I do it. I get the taste in my mouth. I don't. If 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 my chest is going like this, 
is going in your lungs. Right. And you don't want that. You want that taste in your mouth. And, and, kind of it. It. and then, then there's, there's, there's a thing, thing called, called retro inhale, and, and, and I don't, don't recommend, recommend it for especially, especially for new people, people because, because one, one is hard to do, but, but when, when you retro inhale, it actually brings, that actually brings a lot of flavor in the retro inhale, or especially for new people, so it's not easy, so it brings a lot of flavor in the retro inhale, and then you hold it in your mouth, and you blow it in your mouth, and you blow it in your mouth, so, so it's, 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 it's not easy, easy. So it's a lot of it is and then you it you it you it is a lot of it is 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 you it is a lot Everybody, Everybody else, else is like, maybe, maybe you guys, guys just follow through, through it. it. Well, actually, I am. You are. <laughs> You're smoking yeah. a little fat. I, am, I, am. I was. I was waiting I, to have I one today. David's going to start number two in a minute. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. I had uh, so so I went off camera for a couple of reasons. One, I'm deal, working on a deal, which I hope we get. But that's not the reason. The second reason is because a couple of my followers are not. Uh, they're not getting the link, so I'm trying to help them. So sure. I'm working with Mike. So if you see me get an on on off the camera, I apologize. We're trying to make sure that everybody can get the one that wants to try to get the link. Uh, so Mike's just going to send over me the link now. Um, and I'm just trying to see. You guys don't always need me, though, right? You gotta, no, you, no, you, no. All you need is my house. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And your cigars. But one thing I want to okay. mention. So Mark's on great. I want to see Paul. Oh, so. With um, with any cigar, if it is not soft to the Mark, touch, welcome. if there's not a little bit of softness to it, and it's dry, okay. and you're hearing a cracking, mm -hmm. do not smoke that because. You could have the most expensive cigar in the world, and because it's dry, it's it's not going to taste good. It's actually going to burn hotter than it is supposed to, and you're not tasting the tobacco. You're actually tasting the 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 whenever you burn anything, the carcinogens, the carbon, all that, the tar, all that stuff is what you're tasting. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want that. As the cigar is being smoked, you'll find that it's really soft at the at the end here. It actually is really soft. Okay. Yeah. That's there because there's moisture and it's oh. and it's starting to dry and it's and it's part of that process. Um, so I don't advise anyone to smoke a dry cigar. Um, please, you know, go see a tobacconist and ask for some advice or look online. You might see some online as well that will helpful hints. But there are products out there. There's a product called Bovita Pack. It's actually it's a little paper. Um, envelope about this big it has liquid in it and it releases moisture it's either at 65 to 72 73 um, you can buy those and you can put that in any humidor or even a ziploc bag to re-moisturize your cigars um, the thing is you don't want to smoke a cigar it's dry because it's you're not doing yourself any any anything. it's just gonna taste like shit so here's a question for yes so this is going nice <laughs> you know, sometimes people smoke, especially a lot of first-time smoke, because it's canoeing heavily. Why is that happening? So canoeing could be could be two things. Repaying. One is the way it's manufactured. Yeah. If if the the tobacco leaf inside is not rolled properly, it doesn't have enough of a uh, even fill. Mm -hmm. Then it could do that. Um, the other reason is is when you're lighting it, if you burn the edge a little more, and you, you kind of hit that edge, you you sometimes have to re retouch the cigar to to fix it, and, and that's and that's not wrong. So you want to make sure it's burning evenly. But that reason is manufacturing. Sometimes you'll have a soft spot, and that means that there, the tobacco is not even throughout. I know. The I've had that before where. So I, I, I'll be I, here, I, and then you get a hole past to you. <laughs> no, no. So sometimes, as you're smoking, and I can you can see it like down. Yes. And it starts to burn through because it's like that. Yeah. There'd be a hole in the filler. Yes. And it just wouldn't be even correct. So is this bad that we're smoking like like this? Oh, yeah. This bad? Well, so, everyone. So wait a second. So Paul always goes well, like, but when we smoke cigars, Paul sometimes will light a cigar like three times, and I'll be done on my second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what? It, it's listen, guys. You, you gotta relax. It, you gotta enjoy it. 
and you you know what it's a social thing you do with with really nice friends come in and, and you want to make sure that you're enjoying it like there's you know what yeah you know when i'm not the cigar police <laughs> no, you know what? Some people, you, you might have some friends that criticize and say, "Yeah, you know what? You're not smoking so you properly." Everyone yeah. smokes at their own, but you know, I, I try to advise people. So look, yeah. this is, you know, I mean, this size cigar should take you at least an hour. Um, it's a, a six by uh, box press, so it's like a 52, 54 ring gauge. It should take you at least an hour, and if, and if you're doing it in 40 minutes, I'd slow down a little, right? Maybe have another drink, a little more of a drink, or, or a little bit of a talk. Um, and cigars do go out sometimes. Um, cigars that are very moist, you'll find that you might have to relight if they're too moist, but they'll feel really spongy. So keep that in mind. So like you, like that's my buddy Chris. How's it going, bud? Hey, how's it hey, going? Good. Oh, it's my buddy Steve. Yeah, where are you? Yeah. It's my good. buddy Eric. How you doing? You're right in front of the cameras, Mike. You might want to keep oh. walking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so cutters, have you used the V? You used the V cut before? Yeah, mine kind of jams. You know, oh, does it? Try to follow. Yeah. Remember, we were saying before it doesn't pop open. I, I oh, just yeah? love it open. I'm so good. Yeah. How are you? Good. I know how to work it. Not everybody does. <laughs> no. Maybe it needs a little lube. <laughs> Hey now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going there. <laughs> we go, wow, this is a good day. Here we go, here we go. It, was just, it, it took just, long. You know what? Sometimes it just comes right off the <laughs> yeah, No like, filter. <laughs> you ever hear that? Hey, guys, no, also, we got some food over here. Help yourselves. Um, yeah, and eventually, if it gets a little bit cooler, a little darker, we can throw in the fire pit. Just gotta, we'll guess, move the cigars first so we don't toast them. <laughs> it would be like, that would be a waste. Maybe. <laughs> now it's cigars. Yes. If you're drinking, say, a scotch or a whiskey or a tequila, does it change the... Is there a preferred cigar with a preferred liquor? Have they, has it come to that or no? Um, or in the industry, no. There, that's actually something that... There's a couple of things in the... Like, in terms of... Uh, there, there are rec some, some people so recommend smoking right, a cigar yeah. with a certain scotch or, or a certain uh, beverage. It really is your, your preference. Now, if you're not a scotch uh, drinker, then, and they say this goes well with scotch, then you're gonna say, oh, I'm not gonna. It, it really, it's your preference. Um, what I would suggest is uh, there are some, some, uh, some cigars that have a, a lot more strength to it. It is, it is recommended you go with uh, more of a smoky peter scotch because, uh, because of the strength and that it kind of complements it. But some, someone who, who enjoys cognac with the cigar, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm having some, a Campari right now. Yeah. I, I know some people actually like it with the beer, right? It's yeah. really your choice. Um, there's, not, there's, no, there's no etiquette in terms of golf, you know, cigar etiquette like golf in the sense of, oh, you can't have that, that's, no. You guys, you, you want to enjoy the cigar with whatever drink you like to drink. So keep that in mind. So here's a good question for you, as we're all as we're coming to the point, when to ash? Okay, so you know what? There's there's people out there that actually have an um, an ash contest that stays on yep. on the cigar. <laughs> we do it most of the time yeah. until okay. one of us loses, which is inevitable. so. I, <laughs> I didn't tell you guys this, but I was keeping an eye on everyone because people who have these competitions also know that the easiest way to win it is to get a paper clip and shove it in the middle because it won't come off. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so, you know, I, I watched everyone and I didn't see anyone pull out a paper <laughs> clip, so no one talked about a, an ass Just competition. Say, the, uh, <laughs> but someone you know, gonna win a bad point. point. Chris, you figuring out? You're at a point that you could ash. Yeah, hasn't gone out yet. So it doesn't fall on your you clothes. Go. I'm gonna ash soon because I got I'm all in white today. I got my I got my nice hat on as well. Um, but you know what, when you're ashing, don't flick. It's it's nice to lay it down and just let it down. And at the end, when you're done your cigar, it's not a cigarette. You do not press it down into the oh, ashtray. That, that is the, that ashtray. That, that is that not, yeah, that's, yeah. you know what, if, there's, if you enjoy a cigar, why would you um, discredit it by, by putting it out like a cigarette? 
You know what? what? When it's done, story, well, you should lay it down to rest. Yeah. That's how it should be. Well, yeah. that's exactly, and I told you that story. So when we were, uh, Natalie and I were in uh, the Dominican, where she thought it was lost. I didn't know there was and a there, and the <laughs> So the proprietor and I got along really well. We had like three cigars and stuff there, and he's always like, so we're so good cigars. He goes, and I was about, like, I never, I knew, knew not to ask. He goes, you don't ash. And I said, like, this awesome guy, I forget where he was from. He's from the other side of the island, right? And uh, yeah. awesome guy, awesome guy. And he's just like, and he's sitting against the old man. You let it lay to rest. You, you give it respect, and I'm like, that's it. And I've always stuck with that. You know, it's been amazing. But you know what? There are people that don't know that, and and it's, you know what? These are questions that, as you become more um, interested in smoking cigars and, and you, your group of friends, it is something that you know you should pay a little respect to it, in the sense of that. Um, I've been doing this for. I, I actually worked for Loblaws, uh, running a Holy Smokes. Mm -hmm. uh, for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, I did many store openings. I started in, in Oshawa, then I went to uh, I went to Burnham, uh, sorry, I went to uh, Young, Young and Shepherd area, uh, then I went to Burnthorpe, and then I went to uh, and a couple other places. I did store openings. I did that for 10 years. I've been at, uh, working for House of Horath for 10 years. As of Monday, will be 10 years. And I worked one year for another company, uh, Distribution GVA, based out of Montreal. So this all came about um, because of my, my passion and interest in cigars. Um, this is not something you can learn in a school. Well, there actually there is actually a school in the uh, Dominican Republic. La Aurora has, uh, has a school that, uh, there is an actual school there in terms of um, they teach. Uh, at, but it, in, ge in general, it, it's something that someone has a passion for and you get involved in. What Not about, everyone has that. What about the cigar mix? He has a little passion for this. Yes. <laughs> uh, Have you guys few, checked around? He's right here too. There's a, there's a few. Uh, there's a, <laughs> cigar Vixen is a very popular girl that uh, a woman that's beautiful and and she goes to all the. Uh, there's there's three events every year. There's the uh, the Cuban Cigar Festival. They're actually one of the the first ones to start that festival. Um, then the other one is uh, the Domin Dominican Republic have a, an event every year called the Pro Cigar Festival. And then uh, the Nicaraguans just um, a few years ago have been making their, their cigar festival as well. Now they're actually all almost like one week apart from each other. So, um, so, th <laughs> so actually this February, you know what, it's actually something that awesome. people should consider if you're of, uh, an average. Totally different. <laughs> <laughs> Did he show you the stuff no. I said? I don't know. Probably not a good time, Michael. I don't know. Anything that I said. That's another conversation. Paul, I got a question. I see everybody has this nice long burn on theirs. And yeah, mine is burning is, like okay, half and half. So, so now you need to adjust. So what I would do is, because it's burning out evenly, you you have a, a precise single God, flame, you. and you want yeah, to just listen, kind of just hit that. that there. See that? Just get it going a little bit. Yeah, yeah just get that going a little hey, more. Awesome. Yeah. And you see how it's kind of even the wild boy. Yeah, we're going to do it right now. Too now. Not expecting. Yeah. yeah. Just saying. I didn't have no rule book. I didn't get the I got an envelope, but no rule book. Yeah. yeah. I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Derek, how long have you known me? It is, it is an 18 and over event, I was told. So. You were saying Italy. Now, is Italy coming in like it's just coming up, oh, no. up and coming or it's been around for a while because i've never heard of italy italy sells um we sell a brand called toscano it's made in italy toscano has been along around for in italy for many many years it's um toscano is is the biggest cigar manufacturer in italy and actually it's uh, toscano is a, a different cigar than than what you see here um Toscano is a cigar that, um, if you watch Clint Eastwood in those cowboy movies, yeah. he had that little, it looked like a little trumpetta, yeah. Yeah, yeah. little trumpet, that's Toscano. That's what it looks like. Mm. And you know, if you were to get that cigar, it's hard. It looks like, it looks like a twig from a tree. Um, it's the way that they actually make that cigar. So, so back There's in the day, for you, eh? Just walk around with those yeah. back in the day, um, it was actually, it was an accident. That <laughs> yeah. Uh, they used to make it uh, just normally, and then what happened was the, the river that goes through Italy um, uh, overflowed, and, and the warehouse where they make the, the Toscanos got flooded. So 
the actual cigars were flooded. So what happened was because of that, they would figure, okay, we, we're gonna add a, a liquid to the process when they make the cigar. And that is Kentucky tobacco. It's a very strong tobacco. A lot of people um, find it a little too strong. Um, but it, for some reason, Italians yeah. love that cigar. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the Italian the men, they like love that cigar. <laughs> so, so or they, water. <laughs> so that, that cigar, is uh, it does really well in Canada. Well, throughout the world. It's, it, they sell it internationally throughout the whole world. We took a bunch of those down in Croatia. <laughs> Which was that? Oh, the Toscanos? Yeah. Well, I got started because he was yeah. in there. So when we were in Croatia, um, we made it because Paulo had turned me on to these questions. He goes, well, I'm in there. He goes, well, you go to the they're cafe? all over. Yeah, the little yeah. cafes, they, yeah. all these different, and they have the different size yeah. ones. Yeah. So we were going for, we are, both of our families, I went to visit Derek in the uh, UK, for those who don't know, and then he's living up there now. And our families took a little trip. We took a week trip. They came in the UK for about the weekend. And the Toscanos were left and right. We just, we'd oh, go yeah. a little place, grab, so a, nice. grab a little box. And that little cigar is small, but that cigar is 45 minutes. It's, it's like the... For who? The, <laughs> for, for me, not for you. There's always exceptions. I'm buying my, my second. I don't know you guys. I'm buying my second cigar here, guys. That's your second cigar? No. I'm not talking about it. Who was that? I'm buying it. It's nice though. I like it. You see, there is a huge difference. Look at that. You know? That's the David Chinelli rule of three right there. like, we're going to measure. Let's start before I start. See, Dave wants to make sure he gets four or five in tonight before, before he goes to bed. home, he's going to finish the box. <laughs> well, Wild Bird was the night when I was, we were over at uh, Masney's house. I had four that day. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you says, I had the fourth on the walk home. I'm like, the kids left. It was only a short walk. For the the Mike, the walk like, I walked, it only took, it was only, it's only a 10 minute walk from yeah. Mike's house. <laughs> and I had my fourth cigar on the way home. And I'm like, like, oh, well, walk here? I'm like, well, Dave, I didn't walk. back That's in the day when you were living at home. <laughs> I, I didn't leave your house till like uh, three, probably four. three, four in the morning, and and we probably had like four or five cigars. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and you know. and a few bottles of uh, scotch. Oh, and the Weird. scotch oh, yeah. and all that. It's crazy. I think it was your Christmas party. Oh, we tequila. Oh, oh yeah. When he brings yeah. out the tequila. I fin I, I, I finished most of that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I like poly me. polyester suit. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> not good. The Christmas. Not good. Oh, yeah, 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 the Christmas yeah. over at him, right? Oh, he had the wow. Christmas uh, decoration. Yeah. He's sweating. He's like, I'm really hot. Are you hot? <laughs> I said, Dave, it might might be your attire. <laughs> might have something to do with all the tequila. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, 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 yeah. Suit. Always, always drinking breathing, tequila you know, neat. Was the, breathing no well. ice. Yeah. Not even ice. There's not one breathable fabric. <laughs> <laughs> Extra tight. Listen, I, when I do stuff, I do it all out, right? That's, a, that's why Chris loves me. You hot? No, it's actually, it's pretty cool in here. <laughs> I think I lost 10 pounds that night. <laughs> you never wear that suit again. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, when I want to drop some weight, I will. <laughs> you can wear that to the moon. Oh, he was there. That was yeah. priceless. Or into a fire or something. <laughs> Everyone's wearing the thick sweaters, right? The Christmas yeah. sweaters. Yeah, Christmas that was, jumpers. That's right. We're Christmas just jumpers. Right. Oh. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Good times. No different than any other day. Just no. Do it. no. Did it get better, Chris? Is it? Is it even? Yeah. Just to clarify. I dropped that it. That was that Christmas cake. Yeah. 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 This, this deck yeah. has uh, seen lots of ash. So so you're, you're, you're smoking times pretty well. Look, it's almost. I'm catching up. I'm catching up. You'll be in Europe. Oh shit. Oh, Dave, there he goes. Oh, oh you, you need oh. the drink, you're good. I almost made a flaming homer. <laughs> <laughs> Paulo, before we got on, you were talking about the difference between like Cuban or Nicaraguan and all the different areas. I thought it was really interesting. If you could maybe tell us a little bit more about that. Okay, so the, the, the cigar originally originated in Cuba. And um, if you look at any of the um, the cigar manufacturers like there's a lot so the oldest Dominican cigar manufacturer is La Aurora and and they've been actually in business for over 115 years in the Dominican so all, all the um, all the it all originated from Cuba and then a lot of people who basically left Cuba to look for a, a better life in another country uh, a lot of them worked in the farms Right? Or they worked in the, in, in the cigar industry somehow. So, you know what, it, it's not that hard. It, to, to bring up a pile of, of seeds in your hand, to put them in a, in a bag and put them in your hand, bring them to another country, you could start a business with that. And a lot of them did. Wow. 
An example is Padron. I'm not sure if you ever had a Padron. If you see the actual label on the cigar, on the label, it has the island of Cuba. It's also paying respect to their, where their roots were. So they left and went to Nicaragua, uh, they, well, Honduras and Nicaragua, and basically they've, they've done that. And a lot of other com companies have done that as well. Like E.P. Carrillo, um, they've done the same thing. They, they, uh, a lot of people end up leaving because Cuba, you know, being the country that it is, people left for a better life somewhere else. Yeah. And they they brought their their traditions and their livelihood that they've learned from Cuba to another country, and they and they've done that. And th and that's not okay. That's for cigars, but throughout the world, this happens everywhere. Yeah. So you know, I mean, there's people who, who left Italy, um, and they said, you know what? They came to Canada. I said, hey, you know what? I can't find good uh, uh, good tomatoes. I can't find it. So people like like La Aurora imported stuff from Italy. That's just some of that, that's kind of how it worked in the sense of that. Um, but you know what, in today's industry, when you're looking at Cigar Aficionado or any of the other, like Cigar Journal or any, all of them are all doing the top 25 or top, top cigar of the year for that year. And what you're finding is, it's not always the Cuban cigar that wins, okay? Nicaragua, um, either with, with uh, my father or another another company from Nicaragua has won that award in the, if you look at the, in the last probably 10 years they've won it I think four or five times mm -hmm. so That's that tells me that the Nicaraguan cigar is actually becoming very popular and very uh, <clears throat> streamlined in terms of what people are buying and, and a lot of it has to do with price and and also manufacturing is very important people are price sure i'd like to ask if they, uh, I'd like to ask a few great bang for the buck cigars i have a hard time choosing at times but we have a few recommendations Thank you. well actually that that ties into uh what we're talking about so like nicaragua and and the dominican are are, are places that are doing really well Cuban cigars, in terms of quality, it is what it is. People, some people who smoke strictly Cuban only smoke Cuban, and they're not going to switch. It's it's their preference, what they like. I used to be strictly Cuban smoker, but over the years, companies like La Aurora, Padron, uh, Davidoff. Oh, Davidoff I love David. is a very it's a very it's it's the high end Dominican very cigar. High. So the Davidoff is like the Cohiba in the Dominican cigar compared to the Cuban cigars. Um, some people only smoke Davidoff. They have very strict, high quality control and some people will pay for it. They'll just pay whatever it is because that's what they know. They're getting that consistency. But like I said, Nicaraguan cigars, there are a lot of companies out there that, that have good cigars. Um, you know, I mean, there's companies like Rocky Patel, E.P. Carrillo, uh, my father, you have, um, who else, uh, A.J. Fernandez, that's another really good company that does really well. It, it's really what it comes down to is when you, when you like a certain cigar, when you go into a tobacconist, you should say, I like this cigar, what is something that's comparable and a good, good price point, you know. There are also cigars that don't come in a wood box. They come in a bundle. It's a cellophane wrap. We actually make three three cigars that are cellophane wrap. We call it H of H House of Horvath bundled cigars. So we have one from the Dominican, one from Nicaragua, and one from Honduras. So the one from from Dominican is made in the La Aurora factory. So the quality of the tobacco. Is, is not selected for a box cigar, but it's still it's still a Dominican cigar made in the La Aurora factory, and the quality of the of that is lower, but it's still at a good price point. That is good for someone who who smokes a lot of cigars and is very uh, conscious in terms of pricing. What would be your go-to cigar? 
Mine? Yeah, like if you if, if you I, had to do you know, a regular one, or if you wanted to, like, not need a special cigar, but a go-to cigar that you'd have. This is something that I'll smoke really consistently. Mm -hmm. um, people, people kind of go to what they feel, in terms of price, um, is always a factor, right? You gotta understand. I, I, here's an example. If there's a guy that is on the road all day long, and he likes to have a cigar, he's not gonna buy this. Because he can buy a bundled cigar, which is like, uh, he can buy three bundled cigars for the price of one of these, yeah. right? Uh -huh. So he's gonna buy those because he's on the road driving all the time and he feels that he, while he's driving, he likes to have a cigar. Yeah. So that type of smoker likes that. There's, there's the, the smoker that likes to walk his dog and he wants to smoke a cigar. So that type of smoker will that will have that type of cigar. I don't find there's a lot of people that will smoke a Cohiba while they're walking their dog. You know what I mean? You kind of, you, the other thing too is this, we, we all buy a box occasionally, right? So if that's the only cigar you have, that's all you smoke. But that's, that's not doing, it's not really helping you because if you buy a really good quality box, you don't want to smoke that all the time. I'll, I'll try and smoke a cigar like that, like either two, maybe, maybe three times a year of that quality. But then I'll buy something that I, I have more of a go-to that's not as expensive. So keep that in mind. And you know what, tobacconists are really, really good in helping you, showing you that, hey, this is something that you could smoke on a regular basis, instead of having your Cohiba all the time, right? And and it's actually something that I like doing, is and, and I've done over the years. Like I have cigars that are, I have, I have actually some cigars that are from 2000, okay? That's unheard of, okay? Some people who, who who have like a wine connoisseur, yeah, gotcha. they'll have they'll have stuff that's you know they'll. they'll I've seen this collection. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Terry Ann's wife. <laughs> she sees it. She knows where it is. She's not watching right now. But, uh, <laughs> anyways, in in regards to that, <laughs> some people who 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 collect wine uh, will will have some nice bottles and and they'll let it sit for 10, 15, 20 years, right? And some of them you can, some you can. But not everyone can do that. Now, if you had a box and over the years you smoked one occasionally over the years, you notice actually there's a difference. As a cigar ages, it becomes a little smoother, more refined. Uh, and people say that with wines as well. Now, I'm not a sommelier, I'm not a big connoisseur. I do have a wine collection that I do have. I have some 97s that I, I kind of still have that I like. Um, and I don't, I don't drink that bottle every time. And I'll be honest, you know, with COVID, I've been cracking some <laughs> bottles very regularly. Like, you know, I mean, uh, oh, you mean to deplete your stock? Right? <laughs> Honestly, I am, I am, I am. So, you know, I mean, it's good to have that. But you know what? It's nice when you have a cigar that's that's like 15 years old, or even say 10 years old, and you go, you know what? Today I'm going to smoke that cigar. You know what? You're you're saying, okay, so I'm going to plan my meal. So I'm going to make myself a nice rib steak at home. Yep. You know, I'm gonna make all the fixings that I like, have that, and then tonight, I'm gonna go light that cigar, I'm gonna pull out maybe a, a nice bottle of scotch that you might have that you don't always smoke, or drink with, with that, and you'll pull out something that's rare, yeah. right? So, something like that is really, really good to do, because you know what, you kind of, you're complimenting both the cigar and the scotch, and um, and some people really like that, and, and I like to do that, and sometimes, um, like I actually had my 50th and um, I had some friends over um, and it ended up, unfortunately, was, he was, was there. Dave was there <laughs> and it, it ended up raining. At least there, there, unfortunately, sorry, Dave was there. Sorry, sorry, there. Oh, he wasn't invited. And and he was Dave showed up. Down now. <laughs> <laughs> it was planned. It was planned. <laughs> But I, I did one for cigars or any fine for wines online. or whiskeys. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a birthday party, he will be there. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I'll just show you the cigars. Lose your cigars, Dave will find you. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I pulled out a nice. I did a nice, a nice croquette. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I actually had a nice porchetta roast I did in, uh, in a rotisserie nice. in my bar barbecue for like three hours. Nice. It was delicious. And uh, and then I, I had a tarp covering it. Like I was ready for the rain. If yeah. it, it poured and we were fine. And I pulled out a nice Padron uh, 1926 uh, Churchill. Yeah. I have one. Yeah. 
And how so, was that cigar? <laughs> well, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I had two that night. I think I, I came from a stag, so I was later than everybody else. And I still had two cigars that night. I still stayed with that. Before everyone else. And, and it was only yeah. 25 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, uh, when you're going to have one of those treats, Paulo, yes. what, what's your like your top two or three, your go-tos, when those ones that you smoke you know, three times a year when you really want something good? I'll look at uh, like a Padron or um, or if there's uh, some of the limited edition Cubans that, that I used to have. I still have some. Uh, I'll open up one of those boxes. And, and I and actually I opened up the box. How many people were we? Like fifteen? Was it fifteen of us? It was a, yeah, you had a lot of people. I think fifteen, twenty, something like something that. Something like that. So I I opened it up. Um, I opened up the box and I actually said, uh, "Friend, I said, look, guys, this is uh, something I wanted to share with you guys. You know, um, I have a twin brother, so we he had some friends and, and I had some friends, and we we have some mutual friends. So we um, we decided to open up a box together that we all liked and." Um, it was a rare oh, box yeah. that you know. I mean, yeah. it's it's not cheap. But drones are quite expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, a cigar like that's over a hundred bucks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if if you guys are looking at to buy a cigar like that, but it is it is a very good cigar. And sometimes when you have a situation like that where you have a fiftieth birthday or special birthday or, or a special event, yeah. you want like to you want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Monday. Tuesday. Monday. Yeah. Yeah. A slow, a slow Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's take a hundred dollars <laughs> cigar and just have a good day. Question: I think on my fortieth, we did a in the summer. Was, I did a BQ Fifty Six. Yes, that was exceptionally enjoyable. That's very nice. It was a nice cigar. tomahawk, and yes. took it down. Well, that's very very nice. Yeah. Day. So that's that's what you do, right? And and what happens is. It's it's a memorable time, memor a memory that's always with you and your friends. You'll always have that. So, Paulo, you were talking about having some, you know, since so the course, 90s. Not many people do it with broccoli. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> the, that's the rare one. <laughs> Tweet their own, their own. Right? I'm starting, yeah, yeah, I'm right starting right. a new yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Keep what up, what up, counter. Counter. Please elaborate. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> There's a bit of a delay with YouTube, so I don't know when he was asking. Me. No problem. Well, maybe he'll write it. We'll, we'll yeah, in. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll write that so what I was going to ask you, you said you had some that are as old as from the 90s. Um, 2000. 2000. So, talk to us about how you store them to keep them proper for that long. So, so I have, I used to have a, a big wall unit, and, and unfortunately, when I moved into my house in uh, 2005, um, I couldn't bring that in my basement. Like, your basement is the best uh, for temperature all year round. All you need to do is humidify it. So I had a, a six foot, it's actually four by six uh, foot wall unit. And and I, couldn't, couldn't, I, couldn't I couldn't fit it. it. I, got I got it on the landing, landing but, I but I couldn't turn, turn it to get it down, down the stairs. stairs. So, so unfortunately, it had, it had to go to my, my brother's house. So, as his mom. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. So, we're actually talking about that right now. So, the best place in your house to keep your cigars, your humidor, is your basement. Now, if you don't have a basement, you live in a condo. You want to keep, keep it in, in a, a, a cool, dry, dry area, area. Usually, usually like, like a closet. closet. And, if and if you, you have, have some, some type of air conditioning venting that's, that's close, close, it's, it's good, good because, because you want to keep, keep it on the floor. floor because because it's, 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 in, in, in condos, condos with, with the sun, sun coming, coming in, they get kind of hot. It's like one. Yeah, dark, dark, constant, So Derek had an interesting story. He spent a lot of money on a nice humor. I remember it just... Which was it? What was it? Daniel Marshall? Marshall? Was it, uh, yeah, I don't remember what type it was. And I did it, you know, I set it up right, wet it all, did it properly, and then the seat all moist. And then it starts to couldn't keep it in. So you have those punches together. Now, is it that with the green sponge, the Credo sponge? Yeah, that was, yeah. And then I ended up putting, for a while, now Dave got me on this sometimes, put a little cup of water in there. A little shot glass of water and that works well. The only thing I like the, the packs you talked earlier, yes. but that's more my portable ones. Have a nice sealable. You could you could, yeah. you could use oh. that in your your humidor. Have you been done it though? 
Well, you know, Desperate Times Call for Desperate Measures. Ziploc. Ziploc. With so a, a zip zip another bag in there with a wet paper towel. Yeah. And that'll keep it for a long time. you got to be careful yeah. with that. But you gotta, if it gets too much, if, if it's too wet, yeah. you want to squeeze it out. If it's too wet and it touches the cigar, you could be doing damage to it. No, I've done it the other, in a separate Ziploc bag, open the other way. Okay. And so you're just getting, you know, wet a paper towel, squeeze it, put it those, in there. Those Bravita but, packs are the yeah, easiest great. thing for but you. But desperate times. Because now, because what happens is you just have to feel it. If there's a liquid in it, there, yeah. it still has moisture. Yeah. Once it's flat and it's dry, you need to get a new one. That's that's how it works. And actually, that works two ways. That actually does two things. If your humidity in, in your cigars is higher than what that's releasing, it actually will absorb some moisture. You can you can actually kind of not Bovita won't tell you this, but if you if you put that <coughs> that pillow mm -hmm. in a, in a Ziploc bag with with a, a little rubber like a little a little Tupperware container with water in it, mm -hmm. it will actually absorb that, and you'll see that that pillow that Bovita pack becomes liquidy. It actually will, will it works both ways. It takes yeah. it releases, but it also will absorb moisture. Mm. There's also something new that I would consider. I would re-season your humidor, yep. and then there's there's these little little small little pellets. You would you would basically uh, soak them in um, it's called um, conditioning solution, or also known as propylene glycol, and it actually that little that little small little pellet will become like this big. Though they have those um, those credos, those sponges that you can get with that add a tobacconist that will actually work better so that's something to consider but i would re-season it yeah. where you wipe it all down and then put a new a new unit in there because those units are only good for about a year after that you got you got to put new in. the other thing is if your cigars are really dry they're going to keep asking for more moisture and if you don't if you don't keep adding that water it's hard the bovita also make a little sensor that's you can get with a Wi-Fi that actually tells you on your smartphone you need to fill it. They're out there. You can get them. So so or you just go and check every now and then. Too. <laughs> yeah. way. Everything's Wi-Fi connection. I've got a, I've got a buddy who I think he's actually on the stream that keeps his humidor like in his wine fridge. Okay, the in the wine fridge. Uh, what's the humidity though? Does he not have enough wine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what the problem is, right? <laughs> we gotta get the man a little bit more wine. Well, there's the first half right there. there. Freezer, no. Right? So, and people yeah. are doing that, yeah. right? Right. The, the issue with the freezer is that you, you're, it's cold. Now, the only, the only time you put cigars in a freezer is if you have little, little yeah, beetles bugs, in yeah, the beetles, yes. yeah. You yes. want to, you want to kill them. Okay, that's the only time you put them in the freezer. And you need to keep them in there for for consistently 48 hours. Yeah, I had a whole case of Cohibas that yeah. opened open, open, open them up after and it was just all full of little holes. I was crying about that. But, like, you know what, the freezer, so that's not good to do, the freezer. The, the problem with your friend's wine fridge, my, my, my wine fridge is set for 57 degrees Fahrenheit. That's too cold. Too cold. The optimum optimum temperature and humidity is 70 70. That's what you want. Okay. 70 Fahrenheit. 70 percent, percent humidity. So yeah. you would suggest he take the take the humidor out of the wine fridge. He doesn't have a basement. Go put it in the closet somewhere. If he had if he had it, I, I would like just leave it in the basement if he can, and and just get one of those. Either make sure he he's got to make sure his humidification unit is working properly. Yeah. Or get one of those those pillows because it's it's easy. You just yeah, have to go pillows. make sure that you got to check it, make sure it's got some liquid in. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the and the bottom line is you got to feel the cigar because yeah. if you don't feel the cigar, yeah. then you're not going to know. And oh, but so, if they extend right, like let me say, I don't I don't, I don't know when I would have had my oldest ones right now, but they're definitely five years. The other like, thing and is they last. like those, if if they are managed right, they just last. The other thing is this. Now, if you're if you're storing cigars for a longer period of time, mm -hmm. like aging them for for like ten years, you don't want seventy. You actually you want to bring it down a little. You don't want to keep it at seventy. Uh, you got to bring it down a bit. You want to keep it more around. Uh, I'm gonna say sixty four, sixty five. So what about so. I've had this before. Sometimes I think it's just too moist. Whereas uh, you got like the, almost like a white mold or dust coming on your cigars. So, so that's called plume.
okay? So, and, and what happens is that's, that's, that occurs naturally. Mm -hmm. The thing is, when your humidor is closed for a long time yeah. and there's no difference in air, that can happen. And that's that's not going to harm the cigar. No, Only if it's green. No, I'm smoking like them all. They're all fine. You can, yeah. It'll come off really quick if yeah, you want. Yeah, you just to have it. to just rub, rub it off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just rub it off. Mm -hmm. But that's that's because the, the no. humor has been closed for a it's long time. It's been sealed time, for a while. That's, and that, it hasn't that had that airflow. You need a little bit of that airflow. Where do cigarellos fall in as a novice smoker? Okay, so cigarellos are, are kind of kind of similar to a cigar because it's... Um, it's the the leaf. It's not it's not paper like a cigarette, so it's the size of a cigarette, yeah. but it's it's an, an actual leaf, tobacco leaf, right? Okay. Um, so it gives you more of a, and there's no filter, right? There's no filter on. So what happens is it's more of a natural tobacco okay. uh, product in, in, instead of uh, a cigarette, because cigarette is is finely cut tobacco, um, and that's what's in a cigarette. It's finely cut stuff, but um, the outside leaf is a natural tobacco leaf and a cigarette is paper. So that's the main difference. And, and you know what? A lot of, we sell a, a couple of products. One's called uh, Mahari's. They're kind of like the, the uh, longer cigarette about this size. And then the smaller ones we sell are Panthers. And they're, they're it's a Dutch product. It comes from uh, Agio is the maker and it comes from the Netherlands. So. That's something that they've always, um, instead of cigarettes, they, a lot of people prefer that because it's more natural than, than a cigarette. Right? Would you smoke it like a cigarette? Question popping up. Yes. Uh, great cigar for bachelor party, newborn, dad. It, it's, uh, okay, so when you're looking at that, it, one is cost is always a factor. Um, people will look at that in terms of cost. There are some companies that can actually do pro like labels. They'll do labels for you as well. well it's, it's a boy, it's a girl, girl. You put the, 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 the child's child name on it. The year, the, the, some, some people, people will do, do that. that. What, what I, I find is, is traditionally, traditionally people will, will pick something that they, they like at a certain price point. Um, I actually, for my son, I was able to get, um, um, I got two boxes. Um, one was a box that was actually engraved. One one of the one of the guys made me a, one of my suppliers back when I was working at, at Holy Smokes made me a custom box. It had my son's name on it, the date of birth. Uh, he he actually I sent him a picture. He had my son's face on the on the actual label. There are some people that can do that, and and I have still some. And when my son turns 19, I'm going to share it with him. Oh, sweet. And now, not everyone can do that, but some people have that to do. And, and I'm going to have that box and I'm going to say, look, this is yours. You know, this is, we, we've had some, so I only have about five left. It, it was but I did, <laughs> I, I did hang some out. Thanks. So, yeah. but here's, here's a good question. So when you buy a box, do you open it up? You take you, and you look at each one at the cigars, or what do you do when you buy a box? That's always the interesting when you're going to the store. You know, you assume if you had a reputable supplier, yes, they've you, taken care of it. Right? Yeah. And then, are you opening up your? You you want to yeah. check to make sure there's no bugs yeah. in it, and and that it's been well maintained. Yes. So then, and then from that point, it's your responsibility to make sure you maintain that yeah. humidity and temperature. Um, it's very important. A lot of people will say, oh, I got this cigar, and you know what? They forget about it. And then it's like, oh, I had these cigars. I've heard stories where people will say, yeah. He goes, you know what? When I, when I got to get my cigars ready because I'm going to smoke them, I'll, I'll, I'll bring them into uh, the bathroom and I'll take a shower and, and I'll let them, <laughs> I'll steam them, right? <laughs> So, like a shirt. so they'll, they'll have them like on the, the That's why it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll steam them, right? To kind of oh, bring them back. A cigar, listen, you could have the best cigar in the world. If you don't maintain it, it, it doesn't matter how much you paid for it or what it's worth. It's, it's not going to smoke properly. So a lot of times uh, people who buy cigars, you buy a really nice box of cigars. If you don't have a good humidor that you're maintaining, it, it doesn't work. You know, I mean, you, if you're spending that time, money into the cigar, then you should be spending the time on it. So what kind of maintenance does a, 
a, a regular humidor need? What should I be doing to it? Well, you should, okay, so most humidors are like in a 50, box of 50 count. Okay. So you want to make sure you're, you're, you're checking the humidity. It's in the right storage area, so your basement. So temperature is not a factor. And the other thing too is, if you have two, two layers of cigars or three layers, you gotta make sure you're rotating them. So if you have three layers of cigars, so one, two, and three, right? The bottom ones go to the top and the tops go to the bottom. The ones in the middle stay in the middle. You should be doing that every two, three months. If you're not rotating them, then the top cigars will always get the most moisture and the bottom ones don't. So you have to do that. And you have to also make sure that the humidity is right. It's not rocket science, but you need to just, you know, give yourself a, you know, a, once a month, put a, on your smartphone, put a reminder. Say, hey, check the humidor, rotate the cigars, you know. Everyone, everyone knows they gotta take out the trash, they gotta do this, you gotta, you gotta pay your visa bill or your credit card bills at the end of the month. Add that as one of the, one of the uh, on your smartphone, one of the things you have to do. It's not hard, it's, it's just we, we get too busy yes. and we don't think about it yeah. and, and then that happens. So I had a question about box, so you know I've had friends go to Cuba and buying different boxes, right? And you always hear about authentic Cuban cigars versus non-authentic. You know about the seal and the authorized places. So what's your? Don't what's buy your, them off the beach. <laughs> what's so, your yeah. What's your take on that? Like, what's uh, What's the? Well, you should buy anywhere you like when you're buying cigars from any stores. You want to buy. You don't want to buy on any beach. Yeah. You want to buy from a, a legitimate store. Yeah. You want to also make sure that when you're when you're buying them, like the stores, if they're not legit, their legitimate stores won't fool around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you get those cigars, you want to make sure, even when you buy them in Cuba. So if you if you buy them in Cuba, and you want to bring them into your hotel room, mm -hmm. make sure it's cold, right? Mm -hmm. It's cool. Yep. Put them in. A, I would bring a Ziploc bag, right. so that and, and if you have a pillow, throw them in there. Yeah. I know there's still humidity, mm -hmm. but on the trip, on the way home, and I would also yeah. put them on my carry-on. Right. I don't put them in my luggage. I keep them in my carry-on with me, mm -hmm. so they're always near me, in mm -hmm. the sense of that. The other thing too is, pricing varies. Cuban prices have gone up. Mm -hmm. And what used to be, you could buy a cigar in Cuba for a third of the price that it's here, mm -hmm. has now changed, it's not a third. Okay. From a government store, you're gonna pay almost, uh, it's, it's like half. half. You'll get it for half. When you do the conversion and everything, mm -hmm. it's about half. And, and there are people that, you know, go to Cuba, they'll do a vacation every year or every two years or three years they'll go to Cuba and yeah. they buy it. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. The question is, is you got to make sure that when you go there, you're prepared to bring it back and you're, and you're doing that. I, I sometimes, I've gone to Florida yeah. and, and what I've done is I've, I've gone to a cigar store and, I, and what happens is I'll buy... So me, my wife, you're allowed 50, I'm allowed 50, so I'll, I'll buy 100. Right. And what happens is I'll put them in a, I'll buy like a, I have a Rubbermaid container with a sponge. Mm -hmm. I put the boxes right in there, close them, and then when we're on vacation, I make sure that it's in it's in the hotel room or, or wherever I'm staying, mm -hmm. that it's 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 being temperature controlled. Right. Well, let's be honest, you're gonna, you're gonna buy a hundred and like twenty. It's worth twenty while you're there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I, well, I didn't right see how many I come home. Yeah, exactly. I didn't say, no, I if someone's going to Cuba, border patrol. Border control. He's border control. Yeah. Disclaimer. Watch out. But I was like saying, yeah, see, I bring a hundred. My wife brings a hundred. Duty free on the way out of Cuba. That's what you just tell someone. If, if they don't know, you just I, if someone's going, bring yeah. back a box and just get a duty free and give them a couple yeah. examples. And it's, yes. I know it's legitimate, and if someone's buying it for me, I know yeah. the quality's going to be there, mm -hmm. and you've nothing, and it's probably, plus or minus, the, a fair price that versus somewhere else. So you know you're not going to get ripped off. And that's a safe bet? That, yes. That whole, yeah. Duty not, free. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You you have to do, listen, we don't, I don't know if you vote you guys, but I, I don't go away every summer no. or every every winter. So Good when day. when I don't buy cigars that way, you, you've got to buy it from the yeah. What we call the tobacconist or brick and mortar stores, yeah. you have to support them too yeah, because absolutely. they, they, you know what? That's their livelihood. That's yeah. how they make their money. Yeah. 
and, and it's getting difficult. Like, there's new regulations coming out, and, and you guys aren't aware of it. But you see this band? After November 9th, we won't we won't be able to sell the cigar with this band. Mm. And you see that box? It's not going to be like that. It's going to be like the cigarette packs. I don't know if you've seen the, the new cigarette packs. There's new there's new plain packaging laws. So in Canada, it, they're changing that. So it's going to have a standardized label. So a Cohiba or, or My Father will have the same label. The only thing is this is going to say My Father. A Cohiba will say Cohiba. But it's the same It's the same size We're not the label. Standard, there's, not the color anymore? Every, color, no. That's, that's a classic. All, that's that's no. all going to be removed. Oh, in Canada, it, it's called plain packaging. It's a new law. So in May of next year, all of the cigar stores are going to have to have that new packaging. So you might see some of the, the tobacconists with the new packaging very soon. Right. But it's changing. Now, customers may not uh, like that, but we have no choice. The government mm. passed this law. What about the outside of the packaging? Same thing. It's going to be like the. See this box? Yeah. It's going to look like this. It's going to look like the cigarette. That that color yeah. that they mm. have on the cigarette pack is going to be the color of that pack. So it gets. So when it's imported, yes, it gets repackaged. Re no, it comes from the manufacturer. They're packaged to come to with, Canada. Yes, specifically. And it comes, with, oh. it comes also with the duty paid stamp. There's a stamp on it shows Canadian paid duty. It comes from the manufacturer to Canada. But if, you buy it, but if you were to buy it somewhere else, it wouldn't yeah, look like that. It would. Yeah. So so, I've been. I travel a fair amount. Yes. More than average person, probably. And so I always get mine in the Middle East, interesting. and it's a fantastic, fantastic price, price point. point. Cuba. Yes, yes. yes. Where, where it's, it's not as cheap as Cuba, Cuba, but a $10, $10 stick in Cuba, Cuba would be $15 there, there, and it would be $35. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I was going to ask. Now, now is that going to change the price point? Because they're not just pumping out the place. Because you've got the Canadian one, we'll have this box. It'll be one little difference between a box that's directly for Canada. Yes, And there's going to be people that, I don't want to buy it with that label. I want to buy it with that label. So you're going to have to buy it with that label. Is that going to change the game a little bit? This is the farthest I've ever smoked a cigar. Well, these are all new questions because we, I can't we're, tell you we're going through this now. Yeah. So, but you know, well, you're the expert. Right? <laughs> with cigarettes, <laughs> it's happened that. and it hasn't changed because cigarettes, wife's here, people will smoke, <laughs> smoke regardless of the, what the package Perfect looks timing. like. It, it's, they're still smoking, if they're smoking Belmonts, they're still, still smoking, smoking Belmonts. Belmonts. You'd think my wife wanted to take a picture of us. <laughs> <laughs> with Kiva, we're over here. We're over here. <laughs> with Cuba, off camera, it's my, my wife's right? taking pictures of the camera equipment, not even us. <laughs> Nice and the cameraman. Love, love you too. I, 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 I love you Why too, are you I, taking a picture of the cameraman? <laughs> <laughs> These are all good questions. You know what? We, we're this is all new to us, and um, it's going to be it's a learning curve in terms of how how the market's going to react to the new labels because brands like Cohiba, yeah, you know what? You, you a guy who smokes Cohiba, look up smoking Cohiba. You, yeah. you can see it, right? You're not going to see that anymore. The so, yellow is not going to be there anymore. It's so the yeah. yeah. So the guy who would smoke that is gonna say, "Hey, you know what?" He goes, "So what am I gonna do now?" I but, still want to smoke. But we it. also don't smoke cigars. With, like I don't smoke cigars because based on the label, there are people that do. But I know, Some people but do. That there's, there's yeah. everybody knows. There's tons of people like that. I'm just saying, right? Yeah. 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 You know what? It, price is always a factor yeah. for for any smoker. It's always a factor, and there are people that you know when they like a certain cigar. You know what it is? It's also the memory. You know, all you need yeah. is one cigar that you had, and it's, oh my God, he goes, that cigar was so good. And you're always chasing to get that same feeling. The problem with Bihiki, yes. hard to find. Very hard to find if you find like your pain. crack cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always chasing that next high. That's like you with the broccoli, Chris. That, that one yeah, broccoli Yeah, that perfect I piece had. of broccoli. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. It pairs the crunch. so well with the cigar. <laughs> I have a question. I know these two guys are going to smoke them until they burn their fingers, but <laughs> where's the appropriate place to stop? When yeah. is the cigar okay, over? So, so realistically, you see where this label is? Yeah. That's kind of where you have to stop here. So the, the, this part... <laughs> <laughs> but I can still hold it. That's like six bucks with a cigar. <laughs> So that there is what you call a, that person who smokes like that is called a tail end smoker. Okay. Tail. Tail. And, and the thing with that Let's is, but there. the problem with that is 
when you're smoking it that far back, this is the filter. Yeah. Now you're smoking the filter. Like you've enjoyed that cigar so yeah. much, but you're almost burning your fingers. Now, True. You, you're what they call a tail end smoker. And there's people that do that. Now there are people that don't. Some people say, you know what, it's enough. There are some cigar, cigar brands out there that have a higher nicotine content in it. And when you're smoking that, that part there, you gotta be careful, cause you know what? You, you you start getting this cold sweat, and then you your face goes white. It's just, oh my god, what's going on? It, it, and that's what happens. It's the nicotine. It's so so concentrated that you're. I can't. Speak. You gotta watch that. Which is, which is interesting, cause I think that's um, these ones are pretty consistent. I found at least on the back end. Yeah. But as you know, for smoking a Churchill, you really can notice the three different flavors as you enjoy it. As it goes through. So here's a here's a thing. Uh, Cohiba goes through a, a, a longer fermentation process, and and that's why you'll you'll find Cohiba that the flavor is more consistent from start to finish, right? It really doesn't variate that much. Whereas other brands, it might start off a little spicy at the beginning and then it goes mellow. Whereas some will start off more mellow and then it goes a little spicy at the end, and that's naturally because of the the filter that you're smoking. Right. So that's something that you gotta look at as well. So What's the main difference between a really expensive cigar and a not, a not so expensive? Is that part of it? The consistency or? The cigar is made in the same way. Um, actually, the, the only way it's not is, you know those bundled cigars I was talking about? Mm -hmm. It's not classified as a long, fil long filler from end to end. Some of those are called sandwich cigars where they're like a whole bunch of tobacco squeezed together. Okay. Some of them might have two pieces. Uh, as opposed to one single instead leaf. Instead of one, rolled, yeah. one leaf throughout, yeah. okay. which makes it more consistent. So when you burn the first part of that leaf, mm -hmm. it's one flavor. And if the second leaf is not the same, from the same plant, plant yeah. the same, it could have a, a little bit different flavor. Yeah. Okay. Question. Oh. Oh. So with the Cohiba Balance Brew, yes. does that indicate the quality? Absolutely. It, it, there are, like Davidoff as well, is a brand that really has very high standards for quality control. Um, there's another thing too, in the, in the making of a cigar, before they put the cap on, on cigars, they, uh, what they'll do is they'll put it through a draw, a draw machine that checks the amount of air that flows through it. Some of them will actually do it by feel. They'll just, they'll kind of run their fingers and do quality control where they they see if if there's any any knots or any plugs that way, but they a lot of them have these draw draw machines where it has to have a certain amount that goes through in order, and if it doesn't, then that cigar does not get put in a box. It's part of their quality control, and that's what it is. You get the consistency. Dave and I are always in the same speed. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Guys, you want we'll another speak. one? Yeah, we will. So, <laughs> so just let you know, Paul, we have about five minutes. Okay. Uh, just for, we can stay, we're going to stay afterwards and, and do anything. But Mike will, who's doing our video, who's been so kind and set this all <laughs> up, will, uh, he has to get going. So we are. Sure. So for, for anybody in the live feed, um, in the next five minutes, you have a question, let us know sooner. Otherwise, we're going to continue back here. Um, and then the next five minutes or something too. But if you have any questions, let us know shortly. Otherwise, because we got nowhere to go now. It's COVID. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is, this well, is as good well, as it gets here. Saturday night. Saturday. So, <laughs> sooner I have another question the before we wrap up, Paul. Sure. So you showed me how to fix it when it gets like this. Yeah. My question is, I don't see anybody else's going like this. Am I smoking it differently? You think it's because of the broccoli? What do you think is going on? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe the broccoli. Uh, you know what? I haven't been paying attention on how you've been puffing. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's a factor. Um, but should I be like turning it while I'm doing no. it? No, that won't make a difference. Huh. So you, you might have to just touch up the I'll, side I'll, a little I'll more. I'll fix it up a little yeah. bit. Is there Thank another? You. No. Sometimes you. You, you have to touch it up. See, mine's pretty consistent. Yeah. Everybody else's is pretty consistent. Mine, you, mine you, only goes sideways. When, you, when, you, when, you're, when you're starting it, you want to make sure That's you're perfect. getting the edge on it. And yeah. it, you want to make sure you're getting a good... A Maybe good, I just didn't do a very good job starting it. You, you know what? You get better at it. Don't worry. You, you, you'll figure out. Do you do um you know the meringue pies? You don't you don't have the torch that um you, you kind of do on the pie to make sure you get a nice browning evenly? You, you should ask your wife to do that. Right? Chris is not married, thank God. Oh. <laughs> My brother is a chef though. If I was gonna have a meringue pie, go. it would be his job. Yeah. 
Well, I, I want to thank Dave and Chris for and everyone for having this opportunity to share this with you. Um, you. Dave's got my contact information. If anyone yeah, wants to ask cool. questions or anyone that's on the live feed that wants to ask questions, um, they can maybe you can put my information on online and they can ask me questions. But um, I'm always um, I love doing this. This is my job, but this is the passion I have, and and I. I hope I can, you know, help anyone out yeah, whenever I can. Yeah. I've been in the retail side for 10 years and now I'm on the sales side of it. So I've only advanced to the sales side and, and I want to continue helping people as much as possible. So if anyone ever has any questions, please feel free to give me a call. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. Great. Mike, is there any other questions or are you okay to wrap up? That's it. All right, guys. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we loved having you guys. Like I said, we're going to continue over here. I'm probably uh, going to spark up my second one. So <laughs> pretty soon. So, How uh, many are left in we the have, box? We have yeah. some left. Food, yeah. So uh, anyway, if you have any questions for us, feel free to reach out. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed your cigars. Uh, and from complimentary. For compliment, what's the word I'm looking for? Complimentary. That's it. From uh, both Chris and myself. And we thank you guys. Enjoy your Father's Day. I think this is a great start to a good Father's Day week. So I think we should go out and say we... They're, I would say the whole thing, they're, they're only, no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be nice, I'll be nice. So uh, anyway, have a good day, everybody, and uh, we'll see you soon. What, what, one more thing I want to add. If you go to any tobacconist for Father's Day, they have promos. Please, if you're looking for an opportunity to buy something, at a, at a, especially uh, don't be shy to ask your wives to go into a cigar store and buy you some cigars. And you know what? You can give them a list. Give them a little list on... Uh, Post and say, honey, here's some brands that I like. Please feel free to buy me something. Mm -hmm. or, or an accessory for that matter. A cutter, lighter. It's a great opportunity. You know what? Father's Day is once a year. It's, it's your only chance to get something from your wife <laughs> or your children through, through your wife um, that you like enjoy doing, smoking a cigar. You can only right? have so many ties, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Her socks. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, guys. I hope my daughter's on cigars. my feet. I didn't realize I was wearing them today. Look at that. Perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, happy Father's Day.